In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to copy data from one table to another. For example, in our orders table, currently we have about a dozen records. Now let's say we want to create a copy of this table called orders archived, and we want to insert every row that we have in this table into that new table. If we have 10 orders, we don't want to code an insert statement with 10 set of values. That is very time consuming. So I'm going to show you a powerful technique to quickly copy data from one table to another. First, we need to create this new table, orders archived. For that, we're going to use the create table as statement. So create table orders archived as. Now, right after that, we write a select statement to get everything from the orders table. Now, let's see what happens when we execute this query. There you go. So back in the navigator panel, we have to refresh this view by clicking on this icon over here. Now we have a new table, orders archived. Let's look at the data. So you can see all the orders are here and we have the exact same columns as the orders table. However, if you open this table in the design mode, you can see that in this table, we don't have a primary key. So the order ID column is not marked as a primary key. And also it's not marked as an auto increment column. So when we create a table using this technique, MySQL will ignore these attributes. And that means if you want to explicitly insert a record into this new table, we have to supply a value for order ID because this column is no longer an auto increment column. Okay. So using create table as statement, you can quickly create a copy of a table. Now we refer to this select statement as a sub query. So a subquery is a select statement that is part of another SQL statement. Now we can also use a subquery in an insert statement, and that's a very powerful technique. It allows us to do really cool things. Let me show you. So first, let's right click the orders archive table and click on truncate table because we want to delete all the data in this table. All right, it's asking for confirmation. Let's truncate the table. So now back to this table. Let's refresh the table. We don't have any records here, okay? Now back to our query editor. Let's say we wanna copy only a subset of records from the orders table into this table, like all the orders placed before 2019. So first let's select everything from the orders table where order date is less than 2019, January 1st. So these are all the orders, orders number two to 10. Beautiful. Now we want to copy these orders into the orders archive table. So we can use this select statement as a subquery in an insert statement. We write insert into orders archive. Now we don't need to supply the column names because we're going to supply values for every column that we have in this query. So we did it that and this is an example of using a select statement as a subquery in an insert statement. Let's execute this. All right, now back to the table. Let's refresh the records. We only have the orders placed before 2019. All right, here's a really, really, really cool exercise for you. Back to our SQL invoicing database, look at the invoices table. So in this table, we have these columns, invoice ID, number, client ID, which is associated or related to the client ID column in the client's table, followed by a few other columns. Now, let's say we want to create a copy of the records in this table and put them in a new table called invoices archive. However, in that table, instead of the client ID column, we want to have the client name column. So you need to join this table with the client's table and then use that query as a subquery in a create table statement. Also, to make the exercise more interesting, I want you to copy only the invoices that do have a payment. So if you look over here, this payment date column determines if a payment has been made towards this invoice or not. So select only the invoices that do have a payment date. It's a really, really good exercise. Spend two to three minutes on this and then come back, continue watching. All right, first I'm gonna use the SQL invoicing database. Now let's select everything from the invoices 
table and join it with the clients table. Here I'm going to use the using statement to simplify my join. What column are we going to use for joining? The client ID column. Let's execute this query up to this point. All right. So first we see the client ID column that is used for joining these tables. After that, we have the columns from the invoices table, like invoice ID, number, and so on, followed by the columns from the client's table, like name, address, and so on. Obviously, we don't want all of these columns. We only need the columns from the invoices table, but we should replace the client ID column with the client name column. So let's have a quick look at the design of the invoices table. Here we have invoices ID, number, client ID. We want to replace this column with the client name. So back to our query. I'm going to pick invoice ID, number, and then client.name. Let's rename it to client. What other columns do we have here? We have invoice total and payment total. So let's add those as well. Invoice total as well as payment total. We also have three columns for dates, invoice date, due date, and payment date. So let me close the navigator panel, invoice date, payment date, and due date. Now technically because these columns only exist in the invoices table, we don't have to prefix them with a table alias. So we could simplify the code like this. However, I personally prefer to prefix them because that gives me a more clear picture of how I'm joining these tables. It's just a personal preference. Another developer might disagree, and that's perfectly fine. So whatever you prefer, that's perfectly fine. Let's execute the query and make sure we get the right result. So we have the invoice ID, number, client, beautiful, followed by these other columns. Now we want to filter the result and return only the invoices that do have a payment. So we can either return records that have a payment date or the records that have a payment total of greater than zero. Both are perfectly fine. So back to our query. Down the bottom, let's add a word clause where payment date is not null. That's better. Let's execute the query one more time. Now we get only this handful of invoices, beautiful. Finally, let's use our query as a subquery in a create table as statement. So right before select, we type create table, invoices archived as, there you go. Let's execute the query, beautiful. Now back to the navigator panel, let's refresh the view. So here's our new table, invoices archived. Let's look at the data. There you go. We only have the invoices paid, and here's the name of the client for each invoice. Beautiful. Now, just note that if you execute this query one more time, you're going to get an error because we already have a table called invoices archived. Later in the course, I'll show you how to drop tables. That's pretty easy. But for now, you can just right click and go to drop table and then confirm. All right, and then you can run the query one more time. 